morning. Nick, are you there? Good morning to you. Yes, yes, good morning. I'm here. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Uh, I would say happy new week to you. It's been a while. I mean, I've taught you for some time, Nick. Um, uh, we've, been, we've been talking about the elections and I'll, I feel like poking one at you <laughs> since, you know, um, the elections may not have gone the way you wanted. I don't think we've spoken, uh, we've spoken since then. Uh, but Nick, welcome. Um, let's quickly look at what the papers are saying this morning. We'll start off with uh, uh, the Guardian newspaper with the following headlines. Near bankrupt states on viable projects await 18 new governors on front page of the Guardian newspaper this morning. Near bankrupt states on viable projects await 18 new governors. And um, we have state of states in political transition. It's uh, some nice um, data mining there that uh, the Guardian has done. Very interesting. You should take a look. Um, it's not about winning elections alone. You have to know what you are walking into. More from The Guardian. Drama as INEC disowns wreck voids Binani's declaration. This is the hottest story in Nigeria throughout the weekend and into this week. Drama as INEC disowns wreck voids Binani's declaration. <laughs> okay, more from The Guardian. Freedom of expression, a thin line between hate speech, sedition, and treason. Aviation workers begin warning strike today over... Uh, COS as conditions of service welfare. Intrigues as Otedola takes strategic position in blue chip assets. Some made postponement calls. NPC insists on May 3 census. We're just around the corner. One of Nigerians already. Those are stories on the front page of uh, Guardian. Yeah. Uh, I think Nick should say something. Yes. About it. We'll, we'll look at more before we go to Nick. Um, from the punch, we have the following headlines. Uh, Binani declaration, a Damawa wreck under fire, faces INEC panel today. <laughs> the man just stood up <laughs> and declared someone as, as governor. <laughs> you know, all of my friends say just like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, right as to that headline, a Damawa APC PDP clash, wreck faces 36 months imprisonment. INEC annuls Binani's declaration as governor elect, says wreck usurps returning officers power. Atiku Fintiri, PDP, kick. Uh, Damawa APC hails Binani as supporters jubilate. Lagos Ondo, Bielsa leads states in rising inflation. Mm. <laughs> Lagos. That's, that's us. Flood sweeps four-year-old boy away in Lagos. I don't know if this is the time to think of going out <laughs> back home. <laughs> you know. Um, Government of that Ogun traffic official on Lagos Ibano Expressway. Aviation, aviation uh, unions to ground flights, airports today. Nigeria's 96% revenue used to service debt in 2022, World Bank. Ah, Buhari meets governor's EFCC chair, others in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> okay, let's take some more. A business day. Nigerian politicians struggle to tame social media generation. Uh, corporate debt jumps 133% as Nigerian firms battle cash crunch. Naira gains as election dollars circulate. Hmm. Uh, there's some dollar thing we know, we both know about. FG, World Bank, arm um, in talks over infrastructure financing. UBA's quarterly profit rises 29% uh, we'll leave just that. And uh, Idris wins Kebi election crisis rocks. Damawa uh, stories at the front page of Business Day. Finally, Nature News, which is an environmental uh, publication, Cash Crunch. Farmers seek compensation over losses. Maybe some of that $800 million that uh, the Minister of Finance wants to share. You know, to, she's been trying to share that money for some time. Remember the, the first time she came out with, with it? It's, you know, they, they want to share that money. Maybe some will go to the farmers. Just saying. Climate Promises Initiative to address Nigeria's environmental issues. Uh, Minister and FG Partners uh, develop roadmap for national alternative uh, feed resources. All right, let's um, leave it at that as we uh, welcome Nick um, to look at the stories this morning. Uh, Nick, once again, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much. And good morning to our viewers. All right, let's start with a look at uh, what's going down in um, 
uh, Attic Overcast State, Adamawa, where, of course, we saw some sort of uh, magic. I think uh, we'll look at what, uh, how the uh, Guardian newspaper crafted it, calling it um, a drama. I mean, for me, it was just comedy, and I just saw it as comedy. Um, how, what's your analysis of that, Nick? Totally agree with you and The Guardian. Uh, this is drama. This is comedy. In fact, as we say in Nigeria, Nollywood needs to come and learn work <laughs> from uh, INEC. You know, so, uh, and you know, the, the, the whole thing now is that um, this is very sad uh, for us as a nation because usually it is said that don't wash your dirty linen outside so if it was possible that it, this this thing is happening only within nigeria and it is only nigerians that are seeing this fast play out it will even be better but um, the the issue is that the, the entire international community is watching us the entire world because we now live in in, uh, in the age of uh, information age, where uh, whatever is happening anywhere in the world is known globally. And the entire world is looking at us and saying, uh, Nigerians in the 21st century, with all the PhDs, the professors, and everything that there is in that country, is this what you can put up? Is this what you can show? And, and imagine the way they are looking at us. Uh, this is the thing that damages our image in the international community. So that anywhere you stand up in any conference, any meeting, anywhere in the world, and you introduce yourself as a Nigerian, the first thing that comes to people's mind is uh, Dharma comes from a country where uh, the highest levels of government, like the electoral body, plays Kalo Kalo with elections. And uh, there is open and brazen uh, abuse of the laws of the land, and nothing seems to be happening. Elsewhere, this kind of situation happens. The president should have addressed the nation yesterday so that he will calm the nerves, he will promise that something will happen to address the situation, and he will actually stand for democracy. It's all quiet, you know, all we heard was uh, the, the the national electoral uh, commissioner in INA coming out to say uh, this this uh, declaration is null and void of and of no effect whatsoever. What does that mean? It then means that uh, the same INA declares a result. The same INA says it is null and void. The same INA summons itself from the field back to the office, and 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 that is just what it is. It it it, it is a shame that in the 21st century we can get down to these levels. But uh, we, 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 we are setting the agenda for the incoming government that is less than 50 days away. I believe that they are looking at these kind of issues. Uh, President Yaradua, one thing he said, uh, when he took over power in 2007, he considered that the process that brought him into office was not uh, free and fair and transparent and credible. And he promised reforms. And he actually got down to doing reforms. So we hope that the incoming government is going to implement uh, electoral reforms so that we, we don't see this kind of thing again. To hear your thoughts on the uh, aviation worker strike happening today, uh, it's, we're hearing this again, like it always happens. It's a circle. It comes on every time. And they're talking about very basic issues like implementation of the minimum wage, which has not been done. They're also talking about the fact that they are not comfortable with what uh, the Minister of Aviation is proposing, the breaking of the office here in Lagos and turning it into aviation city turn it into to an airport city as it is. So they are going on strike, two-day strike. And we're wondering what that will do to our economy, to everything that is supposed to work 
with the aviation industry. So two days strike because of the reasons they have given. Would like to hear your thoughts on that, their action. Uh, well, um, I would say that this is the season of strikes because even here in the UK, where I'm speaking from, almost every union has gone on strike. For the first time, even doctors went on strike last week. Nurses have been on strike. They are calling strike action again. Uh, train drivers, the same thing. And this is what happens during inflationary times when the, the cost of uh, goods and services keeps rising and the salaries of workers is unable to buy for them what they used to buy before. And that is what uh, employers in Nigeria need to be mindful of. To think that workers are begging for minimum wage is not right. And to say that they are begging for that minimum wage from a government department even makes it worse. Because it is the government that sets the minimum wage. And it is expected that the government should be the first in line to obey or comply with policies and laws that they have made. If workers have put in their due time, at the end of the month, they should be paid. Only workers is very wrong because you are, as an employer, you are actually also setting yourself up for trouble. Because if these people cannot be paid and they don't have money to look after their families, they will find ways of making money from your own treasury as an employer. They can take the money illegally. And if uh, there are loopholes within the organization that workers are exploiting to take money out of the treasury, it won't be long before that organization will start suffering financial problems. So I think the, the law of minimum wage in Nigeria is not uh, being enforced. Uh, like here in the UK, if you employ someone and you don't pay them the minimum wage, once they report to the government, the government is going to take enforcement action against the employer. You know, so it doesn't matter the kind of employment you give somebody, uh, whether he's your domestic staff or he's the lowest person in the organization, he has to be paid minimum wage. So <clears throat> I, I totally align with the agitations of the workers. If the government is refusing to pay the minimum wage, if the government is refusing to pay them on time and as at when due, then they can go on strike. Let them go on strike. Uh, the, the impact on the economy is going to be very damaging, yes? But uh, that means the, the, the Nigerian uh, people uh, who are now faced with, uh, the, with the inconveniences of uh, not having uh, uh, flights run in Nigeria, put pressure on the government to, 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 pay, to pay worker salaries. I mean, people leave their homes every day, pay transport in cash, pay for food in cash, they are paying their rent in cash, and then they work for you, and you don't pay them. It's wrong. So, like I said, even here in the UK, uh, all sorts of strike actions are taking place, and strike is a legitimate action by workers to press for their demands. Unfortunately, it's going to be damaging to the economy, but that is the reason why these are the matters that we you even is like like in the UK here the strike action that was embarked on by the doctors the prime minister was out on air talking about it and asking the doctors to come to the negotiator negotiation table and all of that in Nigeria the leaders are to totally docile aviation minister hasn't said anything the president of the country hasn't said anything and his airspace is about to be closed with no flights and it doesn't attract anything from the president. Who, who is he governing? What does he do in his office for 24 hours a day, 365 days? What does he think that a threat to shutting down Nigeria's airspace is not big enough an issue for him to come out and address? So these are the issues that we're facing. Nick, uh, we don't have too much time to continue as love stories to look at, but uh, for the time is not on our side, but we sincerely appreciate you and we look forward to having you again. Thank you very much and have a nice day. All right. Nice day um, to all of you. I didn't know you were back in the UK. I would have mentioned that fact. <laughs> uh, but Nick, you have to come back and stay in the trenches, in the trenches with us. You know, I, I know this is how you talk about the incoming, the incoming government. It seems you've already uh, accepted that fact, unlike some of your compatriots who are still saying their money was stolen. It seems you've moved on. No, me, me, I am, I am on Japan now to Nigeria. I am on a Japan <laughs> plan to Nigeria. Yeah. It seems you moved on and you've actually embraced the national healing. 
you know, so that's good for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, thank yeah. you very much for your time, Nick, and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay, have, thank you, guys. Yes, okay, we, have have nice to, we have to go yeah. up next. Um, we have more discussions, of course, looking at um, nutrition and dieting, um, the importance of, you know, you know, that mindset of fitness and that mindset of staying healthy with what goes into our body. It's very important. We'll talk about it when we come back.